I've, I've got a, t a teaching that I've been listening to um, and I've been listening to it over and over and it's on a CD and it's, it's about from the fourth track on the CD till about the eighth or ninth track but I keep it right in there because I don't need to hear the whole CD. I need to hear what area I need some victory. Yeah. Right here. And so I, I play it. And I just put it on and play it and come back, do something else, put it on and play it. Now what am I doing? I'm, I'm meditating, really. That's a form of meditation. Repetition. And repetition is one of the ways that you can, what we call, you can transform your belief. Because all of us come into the house of God with ungodly thought patterns. And you just can't come in and hear the pastor preach, oh, didn't pastor preach well today, and you be changed. Now there are some people I've heard that have heard it one time and they're changed. And the reason why they're changed, I believe, is because of the level of desperation that they had. They didn't need to hear it 42 times. They need to hear it one time. <laughs> and so I think that can help people to change. The other reason why I think people don't change is because of unbelief or unpersuadableness. They didn't come in with a attitude that I'm gonna believe this. They came in like the Pharisees came in Jesus' meeting, looking at him with one eye, you know, just, just trying to catch him in his words. They didn't, they didn't you, can't, you can't have a heart that's busy trying to catch somebody in their words and, and believe at the same time. Won't happen. And then the last way thing that I think is a problem is found over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 3 and 4. And he says, but if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. All right, now watch this. The light of the glorious gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Pardon me, pardon me. In Ephesians and chapter 1 and verse 16, he says this, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and what? Revelation in the what? Knowledge of him. Keep going. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That verse right there, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Let's do it in the Amplified. Now I'm just telling you why people don't change. He said in the Amplified translation in that same verse. He says, by having your eyes, the eyes of your heart flooded with what? Light. So that you can what? Know. So that you can know. So if it's not flooded with light, you can't know. 
what, and understand the hope which he has called you and how rich his, uh, is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones, glory to God, set apart ones. Let me just stop right there. Now, what you see, you believe. And this works if you believe it. It's not automatic. There's nothing in this book that's automatic. But if you believe it, it'll work for you. Watch this. If you don't, it won't. Even though it's the truth. So my point to you is, says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God. This is found in Romans chapter one and verse 16. It's a power of God. It, it, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? Believe. Absolutely. And usually what he's asking you to believe is something that you don't believe. You all follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. Something that's contrary to the way you've been taught. But it doesn't work unless you believe it. Now when you believe it, you see it. And when you see it, you believe it. So if you don't believe something, you're going to have to learn to believe it. Mark chapter nine, verse 23, if you will. And look what he says in Mark chapter nine, verse 23. Jesus said unto them, if thou can believe, come on, come on, help me now, that all things are possible to him that believe. So I gotta learn how to believe. And the way I do it is I set up a dynamo. Now, you know, a dynamo goes around and around like a generator and it generates what? power. Got it? So a dynamo. So first I set it up in my mouth and speak it. Where does it go now? Into my heart. Then out of my heart, it comes up again and I speak it again. Say amen to that. Now here comes the divine energy of God. That's the way it works. And the divine energy of God, the power of God will remove anything. Now this is one, this is one example now because I want to go through some thing, talk about meditation, but I'm listening to this thing maybe about 17 times. Now I'm listening to it and every time I'm listening to it, I'm hearing something I didn't hear before. After 17 times, I'm talking about God's man of faith and power. Now if you know I got to listen to it, what about you? No, the business is, it's a come and come and hear another sermon, watch this, and, and, oh, I heard that before. Well, what are you doing with it? You still got the same problems. My point to you is, is now I got to change the way I'm doing something here. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit today because I discovered that. I said, whoa, 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 this is what the deal is. I, the understanding is not enlightened. They hear this thing, they heard it, and they maybe be able to quote it, but they don't believe it. Because when you believe it, it'll change your life. So let's go to the next verse that you should believe. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Over in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, look what he says. The blessing of the Lord, what, it do, what does it do? It maketh rich, and what does it do? It addeth no sorrow with it. Now let's put it up there in the NIV, because the NIV is talking about that same thing. The blessing of the Lord brings what? Well, without what? Painful toil for it. All right, where did toil begin in mankind's life? in the curse, okay? Have you been redeemed from the curse? So you're not supposed to ever be toiling again in your life. Amen. All right? So the blessing of the Lord, it brings wealth. So it brings wealth. Now you just heard me say that, didn't you? 
Now you're going to have to see it. The blessing of the Lord brings me wealth. Are you following what I'm saying? See, I had to do that in canceling out my image of debt. I had to, I had to cancel it out. It wasn't automatic because I got saved. I had to cancel that. I had to go into Romans chapter 13 and I had to find that uh, I owe no man anything but to love him. I had to find that verse. Then I had to go back over Deuteronomy because out of the mouths of two, let every word be established. I went up Deuteronomy and I saw that and I said, wait a minute, uh, that I'm supposed to be the lender and not the borrower. Say again. So I went and I went and I said those scriptures, so forth and so on. And then all of a sudden it comes out of me automatically. Understand at first I'm holding on to the word, but now the word's holding on to me. It has embraced me. Now it's coming up out of my spirit and saying, I'll never be in debt to any man. Now watch this, debt may come, but debt's got to go. In other words, it can't break me down. I can't get in a situation that's so severe till I think God can't take care of me without me going into debt. And you can't do that without meditation. Say amen to this. That doesn't make any difference. Who's this man? Charles Cap? He's talking about poison ivy. Well, he confessed because he heard the scripture in, in, in Psalm 91 that it wouldn't hurt him. And well, what did he do? He went and touched poison ivy, got poison ivy. What did he do? He began to talk and begin to confess about he'd been redeemed from the curse, so forth and so on. Then he went out and when he thought he was ready, touched it again, called for his ivy again. He got broke out all over the place. But he confessed it again, went in there, touched poison ivy, pulled the vine down, did everything. No poison ivy. Come on. Amen. Say amen to this. Amen. Now I'm, I'm saying here that this scripture the blessing of the Lord, what? Brings wealth. I told you, write that one down. The other one is fine, and they're different translations. This is the translation I'm riding on. Because my days of trying to go out and hunt for something are over. Say amen to this. Now, you see what happened now with Peter and the boat. Let's go there, Luke chapter 5. How are we doing? Now, where will this work? What areas of your life will this work? Every area. Every area. That's why I told you I was in school in, 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 um, in, um, in, in, in uh, college and, and you know, I said, man, I'm, I'm supposed to be this broke. And I, what did I do? I was, I was always resourceful. I said, man, I'm, I'm going to get some guys together and get me a band together. So I got a band together. We started playing little, you know, little chicken shacks at first. And then we pretty soon we kind of grew on up. Next thing you know, we're playing in New York and playing in Nassau and so forth. Birdcage in Atlanta. We'd plant. Now, I wasn't saved, but I was still not broke. Amen. Now, I want, I want you to see this now. <clears throat> because then I said, I'm going to buy me a Corvette. Saw this red Corvette, red, white Corvette. I said, that's me right there. That's, that's right, right there. And I bought it, boom, here come dad, he shows up over the house, came in high, and, and, and the unannounced, and uh, came when we were in school, me and my roommate. And so Joe and I, and he came in, sat down, and said, well, whose car is that out there? I said, it's mine. He said, whose car is that? I said, that's mine. That's yours? I said, yes, sir. Did you buy that car? I said, yes, sir. What? I mean, who? Now, now what happened? Now, let me just give because I respect my dad because he's part of the reason I'm standing in the ministry right now. Because he wore my behind out sometimes. But, but my, my point to you is he's, he didn't spare the rod. Uh, but, but let me just say this. I'm, I'm not talking about in college now. I'm talking about when I was a little boy. But my, my, point, my point to you is, wait, wait, wait a minute. Vicariously. That might be a big word for some people, but it means to put yourself in somebody's place. Vicariously, he thought he had to pay for that. And what did it do? 
it brought pressure. Now, I'm just saying how many people that it could bring pressure on in their lives when some kind of bill comes or some whatever it is, even the thought of it. Right, right, right. Come on. I told you about that time I was pumping gas and pumping gas in my car and I pumped the gas, you know, and, and fill the car up. This is some years ago. And fill the car up, went in to pay and I go in to pay and the guy said, what pump do you have? I said, pump number nine. He said, that'll be $30, $36. And the guy beside me said, $36? Now what happened? This wasn't his car, his pump, his gas station, his gas, his nothing. But vicariously, he put himself in my spot. And when I come out, sometimes I don't tell you how much I got to have going over overseas because if I do tell you what money I got to have going overseas, all of a sudden, what? A hundred thousand dollars? Oh my, he ain't got no business going over there. Who gonna pay for all that? You ain't got no money no way. My point to me is, listen, that's why I don't tell you. You don't see me telling you? I just tell you when it's over. We we had $14 million, now we got zero to owe. So I just tell you when it's over. Because if I tell you vicariously, you put yourself down. What? And you go out and tell your, 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 your cousin about it. Hey, Ray Ray, you know he, he know what that pastor did. And I don't need that kind of talk. So I don't tell you nothing. Because your image is so small and so short. But we're going to fix that. Because this year, you're going to have a series of breakthroughs that are going to come in your life. You're going to think like you never thought before. Folks, if you can see something you didn't see before, you're going to go somewhere you ain't never gone before. You're going to talk like you never talked before. You're going to act like you never acted before. And you're going to have something you ain't never had. Folks, we've had people to pop $50,000 in there at a time. Because they ain't moved by it. I can't tell you. And I want to tell you. But God said, don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them. Because you ain't going to do nothing but stir up unbelief. And that was people who were helping us pay this mortgage down. Right. Pow, pow. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, they were just listening to God and obeying God. Amen. Amen. I'm not up here trying to get nobody's money. That's not the idea. All that goes for fuel and goes for expenses on those trips. Yes. It's all gone. Yes. But I'm trying to get you to get out of the box yes. that you Amen. might be thinking in. Yes. So what happened? Three weeks later, daddy came back to the house because he had stormed out, went on back to Atlanta, went back to the house, asked me could he borrow the keys and take it around the block. <laughs> he had come to his right mind. Amen. Hallelujah. So I went and I started talking to you about husbands, love your wives. <laughs> well, somebody said, well, <laughs> sound like a Baptist sister. Well, okay, so, but that's all right. That's all right. Okay, we all brothers and sisters. Now, now, now watch this. I'm just telling you something now. I'm not saying that you go out and do this without having a change Amen. in your thinking. Amen. Because if you do without a change in your thinking, it's going to put pressure on you. And God never intended for you to live under that kind of pressure. Yes, sir. He meant for you to be converted first. And the way you get converted is not only me preach the word, my job is to give you something to say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you put it in your mouth. Let me give you another example. A friend of mine at IBM, he was a fellow manager, but he came now with uh, MMS, multiple uh, schools. And being diagnosed with that, so the next thing you know, <clears throat> I asked him, I said, are you a Christian? He said, yeah. I said, uh, tell you what. 
I'm going to give you some scripture to say. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make a change in your physical condition. Amen. I understand. He was glad to take it. So I gave it to him. Gave him two, I'm trying to remember, two or three healing scriptures. I gave it to him. And then I said, say these seven times a day. When I say seven times, say it for seven times, once in the morning, once at night. All right. Now, what is I, was I prescribing for? Uh, watch this. A gospel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me tell you where I got it from. Go up to Proverbs, please. Chapter 4 and verse 20. How are we doing? Oh, well. I tell you, this year, you're going to have a series of unlimited breakthroughs. It's going to take you places you've never been before in your life. All right, look what it says. My son, attend to my what? Words. Incline thine ears to my what? Sayings. Let them not depart from thy what? Eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy what? Heart. For they are what? Life to those that find them. And what else? Health to all their flesh. Okay? So that word health in the Hebrew translates medicine. So the word can be your medicine. Now, what have we been trained? We've been trained into getting medicine out the bottle. That's what we believe. But now we're going to get retrained that if you got a symptom of something in your body, you're going to open up the word of God, say amen, and run it out of your body. So instead of... I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not saying this, this happens, you know, instantly. It could happen for somebody instantly, but it's going to have to be something processed that you're going to have to practice. Because instead of going to Walgreens, you can go to the book. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. So, let's look at Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. See, if you've been on the road to Mississippi for 40 years and you haven't gotten to Mississippi yet, then your lightning fast mind ought to say, you know, I bet you I'm on the wrong road. Now we're going to put you on the right road. That's right. Now don't be concerned about folk who don't want to hear this. Yes. See, don't be concerned about that because sometimes you got to separate from folk. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's not, I'm not saying you have to hate folks. I'm just saying you have to separate because they do not not exposed to what you're exposed to. So don't be trying to make them understand. I mean, you know what I mean? You get in arguments sometimes. Well, da, 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 da. Don't even do that. All right, look what he says. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein how long? Day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way what? Prosperous. And then thou shalt have what? Good success. All right. Now let's start at the top of that verse one more time. This book of the law shall not depart out of your what? What? Meditate in thy word how long? Day and night that thou mayest what? Observe. Underline the word observe. So when you start meditating it, you're going to start seeing it. You're going to start seeing it. Now, the enemy doesn't want you to see. I'm not talking about with your eyes. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. Yeah, I'm not talking about you're going to see with that. I'm saying you can see what you couldn't see with your natural eyes. Why? Because you're going to get now revelation instead of just information. Say amen to that. So it's something that you're going to be able to see from the inside. You're going to see it like you've never seen it before. So what did this guy do? He began to take this word and begin to form the dynamo with it. He began to say, put it in his mouth, in his heart, in his ears, and, and so forth. And the next thing you know, maybe almost about two weeks, I guess, then he, he, uh, he told his wife, said, I'm going to drive to Virginia. And what did his wife say? You can't do that. What happened? An argument. What are they arguing about? She is saying you can't do that. You know you're not able to do this so far. But wait a minute. He's got a hold of something she doesn't have a hold of. 
Now, why am I saying to that? When faith comes, it converts your humanity to divinity. I'll say it again. When faith comes, it converts your humanity to, your, to divinity. And you begin to think, believe, act, and talk like God. I said you begin to think, believe, act, and talk like God. Praise God. But get this. You were made to do that. You were designed to act like your father. You began to think like him. You were designed to believe like him. You were designed to believe things that your head would never believe. Your heart believes these things. And next thing you know, boom. What did the woman do? She heard about Jesus. This is Mark chapter, put it up there, Mark 5 and verse 25. Now watch this dynamo work. Here she heard about Jesus. There was a certain woman who had had an issue of blood 12 years. She had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had. Now she's broke and was nothing better but rather grew worse. How many of you know medical treatment sometimes can get in your pocketbook a little bit? And when she had heard of who? Jesus. She what, it came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, let's put that scripture up there. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, verse 27 and then verse 28. No, verse 28. Praise God. Just put 28 up there. And, and v put it up there in the Amplified Translation, please. Are y'all with me so far? I said a series of breakthroughs about to happen in your life. For she kept saying, I'll read it again. For she kept saying, I'll read it again. For she kept saying, now that dynamo is kicking up now. The more you say it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you say it. The more you say it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it. Folks, you can tell yourself a lie long enough and you start believing that. You say, what is the truth on that thing now? Because you're designed to believe what you say. And so what happened? For she said, kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. Watch this. Check it out now. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. And suddenly she felt in her body that she was what? Healed of her distressing ailment. Glory to God. Now notice what got a hold. She got a hold. See, some people think they got to call Jesus back. Well, Jesus touched her. Maybe if I can get Jesus to touch me. Maybe if I can get the pastor. That, that's all right. But let me tell you what God's got for you. Put it up there. Romans chapter 10 and verse 6. I'm saying God's got you in mind. He knew when he put you in this earth, he might be, it might be some things that you might get in your body, but God's got a plan to run them out. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaking on this wise, don't say in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That's to try to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? You're trying to bring Christ up again from the dead. Well, what shall I say? The word is nigh you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is what? The word of faith, which we preach. Praise God. So I can get the word in my mouth and where else? In my heart. Put it up there. Psalm 107, please, in verse 20. Over in Psalm 107, verse 20, look what he says here. Glory to God. He sent his word. 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 He sent his word, sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. That word is designed to put the Garden of Eden back in your life. It's designed that whatever's in your life that's not supposed to be there, you can set up a dynamo. You can set up the power of God and it will run that thing right out of your body. Honey, if it'll do it for your body, it'll do it for your moolah. It'll do it for your money. I'm saying what has happened. We haven't worked the word. We're trying to work the pastor, but we ain't working the word. I'm saying I'm going to give you the word. Here's the word right here. Meditate in that word day and night. All right, so let's look at Joshua. Joshua chapter 6, please. Glory to God. How are we doing so far? Amen. Amen. If I sound like I'm getting excited, I am. Amen. I said I am. Amen. Not I'm going to be. I am right now. 
and see the word. You know, God has done all he's going to do about your healing. He's done all he's going to do about your money. He's done all that he's going to do about your situation. Why? Jesus did it on the cross. Did it 2,000 years ago. Now it's all up to you. You don't need to wait on God. God's waiting on you. All you need to do is get this word in your mouth and in your heart. Let's look at this. I'm not saying anything wrong with physicians. They're doing the best they can. If it wasn't for physicians, a lot of Christians be dead. I'm just saying you don't need to get all your money depleted because you're trying to get some medical help. I'm saying I don't care who you are, where you are, and how old you are. You can get this to work in your life. And we need to believe this. Say, I believe it. Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given in your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Somebody say, See. see. Say it again. See. Say it three times. See. All right, now, what happens when you meditate? <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait now. When you meditate, revelation comes. Say, when I meditate, I revelate. <laughs> now, revelation comes. Now, what does revelation do? Number one, revelation tells you what's in store. Why? Because revelation sees the invisible. It can tell you what the outcome is before you get there. It shows you what's available for you in your inheritance package. Revelation. What does revelation do? It convicts your heart that what you see belongs to you. Lord, have mercy. Look, look over at Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Come on, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Look what he says here. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things which are what? Revealed. The things which are what? Revealed belong to who? Us and to our who? Children for how long? Ever. That we may, we may do all the words of this law. You see what I'm saying? Now notice what he's saying now. Let me just, I'm trying to slow down here a minute, but I'm trying to unwind this dynamo. But look, the secret things belong to the Lord, but things that are revealed belong to who? Us and who else? Our children. Now it makes it kind of sound like God's going to hold something back. That is not what that verse is saying. That is not what that verse is saying. That verse is only saying that he's only holding back what you can't see. The idea about it is you're supposed to see the whole book. This book is yours. He didn't put anything. Well, I just can't understand the Bible. You can if Jesus is a teacher. You can if the Holy Ghost will teach you. Say amen. Look at it up there. First Corinthians, boy, I'm flowing like I don't know what now. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. Look at that now. Keep up with me, praise God. See, this stuff comes and when it comes, it comes like a flood. I've got to say it all out while it comes. But as it's written, the eye has not seen, that's your natural eye. The uh, uh, heard, ear heard, that's your natural ear. Neither have entered into the heart of man, oh, your natural part of you, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has what? Revealed them to who? Us by his who? Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Watch this. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man that's in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, what is he saying here? He is saying here, <laughs> are y'all ready for this? Am I getting too deep for you? I'm, I'm giving you the principles for unlimited breakthroughs. Now, the third thing that it does when you revelate the word is revelation of the word tells you specifically how to take delivery on your promise from God. Revelation tells you specifically how to do it. So revelation doesn't even, doesn't just show you what's there. Revelation tells you how to get it. That's why the devil doesn't want you to revelate. He doesn't care if you informate. He doesn't want you to revelate. He, come on, 
on now. He doesn't care if you hear it one time. He don't want you to meditate on it. So he tries to distract you, get you this and get you mad, whatever, and come back just to get another thing. And the Bible says, if you don't learn the first time, now you need somebody to teach you over again. Well, this has been 50 times that we have taught this. Now, revelate, praise God. Now, look what he says here. Now, here's what he said. The reason why I, I went to that is because of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And go with that verse you just put up there before, praise God. Uh, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man that's in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. See, your spirit knows all about you. Right. Say amen to that. Amen. And the Bible says we are one spirit with the Lord. Amen. So now God knows all about you. Your body doesn't know all about you. Your mind does not know all about you. But your spirit knows all about you. But your spirit knows what you can do and what you can't do. So when he gets and, and oh, have mercy. Can I use the words I want to work? When he crafts a specific way that you're going to take your promise, he's going to do it according to how you are. He, he's going, he knows that you don't like okra, so he's not going to put okra in the plan. Come on, y'all yo, yo with me. He's going to make this thing so specific to all you got to do is walk it right out. You just got to walk it right out. So the first thing he told Joshua, we'll put it up there again in Joshua chapter 6 verse 2. Look what he says in Joshua 6 verse 2. What I'm giving you now is worth a billion dollars. Think about it. Because if you ever believe, glory to God, Lord have mercy. The Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Look at the next verse. Check it out. And you shall compass the city, what? All ye men of war, and go round about the city how many times? Once. Thus shall you do how many days? Six days. Is that not the strategy for receiving the promise? Check it out. Notice where it came from? From seeing. Once you can see it, the strategy comes with it. Now notice what that is. That is not something possible. That Jericho is impossible. So God's about to take you into the impossible for you to get things you never thought you can get, for you to do things you never thought you can do. Come on now. So my wife and I, so we confess. Deuteronomy 10, uh, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse 10 and, and verse 11. I've given you cities that you didn't build and houses full of all good things that you didn't fill. All right, so what happened? Now, my wife and I decided, she said, you know, we need a house. And we didn't have about, I don't know, I don't you have to ask her, about maybe $1,500 in the bank. I, I can't remember we had much at all. But that's the time to go get one. Yeah. Is this the right section? Over here? That's the time to go get one. And best time, okay. <laughs> so what happened? I said, let's go look at some. So we got a friend of ours who's a Christian, realtor, took around, look at the houses. And then after we took around and look at those houses, I said, wow. Saw some nice houses and so forth. I came back. God said, okay. Now ask your wife, which one does she like? She said, you mean which one can we afford? I said, no, God didn't tell me to ask you that. He told me to ask you, which one do you like? Now, why? Because where you are going now is a no budget anointing. I'm going to help you now. Where you are going now is a no budget anointing. Now, what happened? 
When she said that, then I got, I said, let's pray. Now, you can ask all of this. You know my wife, she don't, she don't lie. I said, let's pray. We got down on the side of the bed to pray. As soon as we got down there, the Lord said, take your wife and go over there and point at that house. Now, what is that coming forth? What's coming forth is specific instructions as to how to take delivery of the promise. Everything in here is yours. He didn't say house. He said houses. I'm going I'm I'm to believe that I'm, you're receiving this by faith. I'm going to believe that. that. Now, I said, when I said, husbands, love your wives, I said that just like God is doing that with me, with my wife, I am not for one moment to feel pressure. Why? Because God is my source and my supply. Say amen to that. So what I'm saying is when I ask her that, husbands are supposed to treat their wives the way God and Christ treats his bride. Say amen. amen. And I'm saying that somebody said, well, I ain't got that kind of money. No, what you need to say is you don't have that kind of faith. Because the just are supposed to live how? By faith. And anyway, yes, you do have that kind of money. God's got it and he got it waiting on you. And what you need to do is tap into it. Now, I'm only saying this. Not that some men will jump up and think they have to be all that first day. Work on it. And I'm telling you right now that when you start living that way, life get good around the house. Okay, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, <laughs> okay. Let's see, where was I now? <laughs> so what am I saying? He drove all the way to Virginia and back. Never had a symptom. Now I'm saying this is what the word will do. Now we have to stop trying to bring the word down to our thinking and renew our thinking to go up to the word. All right, let's just finish up here. Let's go over again to Luke chapter 5. The blessing of the Lord, what? Amen. Brings wealth. The Luke chapter 5, Lord have mercy. Are y'all with me so far? Now I'm talking about meditation now. I'm talking about having God. And one of the reasons for the supernatural so that you can live like God wants you to live. One of the reasons for the supernatural is to keep the pressure off of your, your life. Say amen. amen. So, and it came to pass, Lord have mercy. Are y'all with me? Am I okay? Now, who am I? I'm your prophet. I'm your preacher. How can they hear without a who? Preacher. So I've been sent. How many of you believe I've been sent? Now, I'm here to get you out of anything that the devil has trapped you into. Any way that he's got you boxed in, we're going to get you delivered out. And we're going to do it Right now. That is right there. That is right there. Let me preach this. Let me preach this. Uh, we'll do it right now. 
Now you'll be surprised how many things in your mind have been programmed that are untrue. What we're doing, we're reprogramming. Now watch it now, because it's going to make you think big. And when you think big, you're going to shout it out like Joseph did, and you might get a little persecution behind it. Because I thought I was okay until I went to Forest Park. Somebody, oh, you'd have moved up there in Forest Park. Now you went to, who, you, you, you went to Richville. I don't know what that was. But you were in Forest Park. You're not down on Lake of Alaska. And I said, no, we, God has moved us. Oh, okay. Didn't say much. Then next thing you know, we're going to buy a shopping mall. You're going to buy a shopping mall. Why are you going to buy a shopping mall? I said, well, the Lord kind of put that on my heart. What is a preacher going to do with a shopping mall? This is what you're saying about me now. Now I'm thinking I've, I've done all the persecution I'm going to get. I think I've done it. But then I told them we're getting an airplane. Oh, Lord, she's low, our airplane. Now what does a preacher need with an airplane? Then I thought I was okay. Lord have mercy. I'm just telling you, watch thinking big. Just don't talk it. Just keep it to yourself or keep it among people who also carry the same kind of babies that you carry. All right, let me just finish this up. So Luke, so here he is. Jesus gets in his boat. And Jesus said, Sit down and taught. Say taught. Oh. Now to teach, you got to sit down. And a lot of folks don't want to sit down. If I'm not up there shouting and snotting, they don't want to sit. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now that you've got preaching. Now you need some teaching. You will have to sit down. And so what happened? After he finished speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Now, I think that's Luke chapter 5 and verse, uh, I want to say verse 5 or verse 4. He said, now when he left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Now, here's what he said in the Living Bible. I, my Living Bible translation home. Let down your net and you will catch a lot of fish. Let down your nets and you're going to catch a lot of fish. Now, watch this. Don't try to weigh it with your thinking because your heart has outrun your thoughts. God says that the things he's given you are called a mystery. That means something beyond human comprehension. Stop trying to feel it. Just do what the master says. What happened next? Peter said, Master, we have toiled how long? All night. And taken how much? Nothing. But the entrance of thy word bringeth light. And check it out. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I'm going to launch out. And he let down what? One net. Now the blessing of the Lord, what? Brings wealth. Every fish in the Galilee tried to get in that one net and tore that thing up. No fish said, well, not today, Jesus. No, no. Every contract for your business. Come on. Come on now. Every, you got to put it in your terms because now maybe you're in business. So what happened? I'm just telling you right now that this was a blessing of the Lord that brings wealth. Amen. Amen. There's plenty in daddy's house. There's plenty in daddy's house. That's why the prodigal son came back home. So my point to you is right now, take that scripture and meditate it. Amen. Why? Because you've seen yourself running after business. Now you got to see business one and after you. Put it up there. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. How are we doing? We doing okay? Now notice what we're doing. We're sitting down now. We're just listening here because that's what I'm doing. I'm instructing you by the Holy Ghost. And don't be, don't be concerned about people who don't want to hear this. That, that's, that's, that, that's why they're where they are. 
So look what it says. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Check it out. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. You ready? Have you ever been run down by a blessing? Come on, it's time for you to be run down. Now, let me ask you this. How old do you have to be for this to work? How young do you have to be? Doesn't make any difference. I'm in school and I didn't even know the Lord and I knew I could have a Corvette. How many people in school right now have no idea that they can have a Corvette? Why? Because that's the idea. The idea is that if you're in school, you're supposed to be broke. Right. Why? Because that's what society has taught us. It taught us this. No, you're not supposed to be broke. You, I'm telling you right now that for you, God paid the price for everything that you would do. You, the janitor can have a Mercedes just like the CEO. And my point to you is the reason why he can have it is because it's not coming through how long he can work. It's coming through how much he can believe because it's paid for. Your healing is paid for. Come on, your vacation has been paid for. Everything according to life and godliness is paid for. Now take it. Praise God, look in that Bible and flip in there and see what you're lacking and start on that. See what else you're lacking, start on that. Because every time you're going to have to change what you believe. And I'm telling you right now, I decree in the name of Jesus that the eyes of your understanding are in light. That whatever Satan has tried to use to blind your mind, I bind that spirit and cast it out right now that you from this day shall see what you've never seen. You're going to be able to say what you've never said. You're going to be able to have what you've never had. And you're going to be able to do what others never thought they could do. I said it, I release it, you receive it, it is done in the name of Jesus. And don't be looking at your DNA track. Well, my mama had that, my grandmama had that. You are on another track. You are on the track of the DNA of divinity. God is your track. Now you just don't listen, don't listen to nobody else. When I start doing it, folks, I had to fight off everything relative to everything else because everything was trying to draw me back into that world of imprisonment, of having flu and having this and that. I had to break out of that, said, wait a minute, I wasn't broke when I was in school. Why should I be broke now? As a man thinketh in his heart, come on, help me. No is he? It'll happen for an unsaved and a saved person. You don't have no problems. All you need is faith in God. Faith converts your, 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 uh, uh, uh. Yes. First converts you. Praise. Faith converts you. Now, what am I saying? We're moving out. We're going into Canaan. Now watch this. When we take Canaan, everything around us is going to change. I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. Did y'all get what I was talking about today? Are, are we okay? Are we ready for the breakthrough? Are we ready for the breakthrough? This is your year. This is 2015. Your year of recompense. Whatever's been stolen from you, God is gathering it up right now because it's coming back. This is your time to rejoice because stuff that's been stolen from you is now going to be revealed and going to be brought back to you. Say amen. There have been enemy forces that have arisen up against you that's been on the side of the Gentiles, but God is reversing everything now. Whatever was stolen from you is coming back to you. Say amen. 
and he's even making it so nothing can hurt you, nothing can molest you. Come on, nothing can, can keep you down, nothing can make you miss it. You're going to get it. You're going to, you, you, I said, you're going to get it. Praise God. Now, if the, if the enemy tries to tell you something different, tell him what Bill Winston said. No, oh, he said, I'm going I'm to make it this year. This is going to be my year. Tell him, tell him the prophet said that this year is going to be a year of unlimited breakthrough. This year, he's going to give me a no budget anointing. This year, it's going to be my year where contracts going to come to me. This is going to be my year. Never be broke another day. Now sit down. Now people say, huh, he sure is going off up there. Yeah, I'm going off, praise God. How we doing? We doing okay? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. All right, now wait a minute. I just, I got one more scripture to show you. Put that last scripture up there found in Psalms. And I think it's Psalms chapter 89. I think it is. You'll put that one up there, please. And look what it says here. <clears throat> All right, it should be on your sheet there. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. <sighs> of with whom my hand shall be established. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. This is a covenant person. Say, I'm in covenant with God. <laughs> the enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. That's you. The devil is not going to be able to touch you. Go to the next scripture, please. I will beat down his foes. Somebody about to get the beat down. So somebody, somebody is about to get the beat down. Now that's all I'm going to say. Give God praise because somebody is going to get the beat down. I said somebody is about to get the beat down. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Yeah. All right. If you need to be saved, here's what I want you to do. Get up out of that chair and come on up here and let me pray for you right now because God is about to put you in a place where you've never been before. Whoever that is I'm talking to right now, let's get your, your background cleared out. Let's get all the sins out of your life. Let's get the blood of Jesus flowing and get a brand new start. Come on up, sister. Come on. I'm talking about people who don't have Jesus. Get up. Come on. Come on up here right now. Come on. I got something for you. Come on. Get up right now. Get up right now. Come on. If you want what I'm talking about up here. Get up. Don't be looking at me. Get up out of your chair. Come on up here and stand with me at the altar. We're going to get God in your life like never before. Come on. This is your day for a brand new beginning. Glory to God. I'm calling for people who also are backslidden. You have been born again, but you are not are operating in a safe manner. You are outside now and wanting to come back to Jesus. Whoever you are, help me shame the devil. Get up out of your chair. Come on up here and stand with me right now. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I'm going to make the last call. This call is for everybody who didn't come on the second or third, uh, first or second call. I bind those spirits right now. Right now, pray in the Holy Ghost. I bind those spirits right now that would try to hold you back because God's got something good for you. He's going to take you out of this place of lack and poverty and sickness and disease and disenchantment. God's going to put you in a place where he's going to beat down them people, those things that have been coming against you. Whoever you are, come on, get up out of your chair. I got five more people that need to come. Five more people. Come on, come on. Don't make me beg you. You don't need nobody begging you. I'm talking about what God's about to do for you. I got four more that need to come. Come on, this is your day for a new beginning. Whoever that is, come on. 
whoever that is, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, saints, at Tuskegee. Come on up to the front. I'm here to tell you right now, we're going to make it so I don't care whether you're in school or not, you'll never be broke another day in your life. Come on, I got three more that need to come. Come on, whoever that is, I got two more that need to come. Come on, give God your life. Let him have you. He's a good God. He's going to do some things with you that you've never been able to do for yourself. I got two more people that need to come. Satan, whatever trying you're trying to hold them with, I command you to let them go right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, I got one more. Praise God. Come on, I got, come on, there you come. Praise God. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Give him praise. All right, I'm going to pray for these that have come. All of you, lift your right hand up to heaven for me, please. And repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for my sins. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me from now on. From this day forward, I belong to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, put your hands down. God is moving on your behalf right now. Everything you did in your past is being erased from God's book and you got a brand new start. Give them a hand clap for coming. Same thing in Tuskegee here. Now, now we've got one of our ministers here. He's going to take you in a room right outside the auditorium and just give you some instructions. The instructions that he's going to give you come right out of the word of God. Um, the instructions, I followed those instructions they did and also the people uh, the disciples that followed Jesus, they followed the same instructions. So just, he gives you instructions, just follow them. If you came with somebody, they will wait on you until you get done. Why? Because this is the day of new beginnings. This is going to be the first day of your life as a saved person. God's going to do some things for you that have never been done before. Let me ask a question. Is there one more person that didn't come and you say, I should have been there? I want to hold the door open for you because you don't want to walk out of here like you came in. God has poured out his goodness right now, this, this day to you, to let you know all the things that he's got for you. I want to just wait and see if there's one more person that yet will boldly get up out of their chair and come up here and stand with me right now. Is there one more person? Is there one more person? Is there one more person? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of it. Is that one more person? One more? One more? One more? Come on, I'm about to close. Don't let me close. Then you go out of this place like you came in. Anybody else? Praise God. Come on, brother. Praise God. Come on. One more? Is that one more? Is that one more? Come on. Is that one more? Is that one more? Is that one more? Come on. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Is that one more? Woo-wee! All right. Okay. For those that came, turn to your right and follow him. Be, we'll be praying for you. Give them a hand clap as they go. Oh, yeah! Now, now here's the deal. I don't know I don't know a whole lot, but I do know this. What I gave you today was the word of God. Yeah. Now, what you have to do is receive it and believe it. Say amen to that. Yeah. Now, you don't need to go like I did and in, in the things that I did to get the cars and so forth. God's got something custom made. I said, God's got something 
custom made. Woo, that's a tweet, man. God's got something custom made for you. Say amen to that. He knows what you like. He knows when you don't like this or don't like that. I'm telling you, God knows exactly what you like. So I'm saying, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I feel like preaching another sermon right now. Y'all got to watch it. When I get a new outfit like this, I might preach. I might preach all day long. Now, did I give you the answer today? Today, I gave you the answer. That's all you got to do is follow the process. Follow the process. Get the word first. Find out what God said about it. And then... Take it and put it in your, your ears, in your eyes, in your mouth, and in your heart. Start the dynamo. The more you believe it, the more you say it. The more you say it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you say it. Pretty soon, faith comes. And when it does come, you start talking like God. And that's when that mountain will be removed. Nothing can stop it. I want you to be all that the master wants you to be. I don't want you to fall short in any area. I was listening at a tape or a video, and they, in one of the South American countries, had started. The man wanted, God said, go start a Bible study in the, in the prison. And what he did is he went to try to do that and they refused him. They said the only way you can work, get in this prison is you have to work here. So he applied for a job. They took him in and he started working there. And then after his certain hours, he had a Bible study. Check it out. After that, he then started a church. Got so many people born again. So now he's starting a church in there. I guess he left the job and the church kept going. Now they're baptizing people. And then it got so big until they, some of the inmates who were Christian would go back to their cell block and get uh, attacked by other uh, people and even some got molested. So he said, listen, these are men now. He said, he appealed to the warden and the prison system, let us have our own cell block. So they let the Christians have their own cell block. That grew so big until he said, let us have our own prison. So they had two prisons that were dilapidated and so forth. He said, well, pick one of those and get it. And all the Christians, prisoners, went over to there. Now they started starting churches in prisons. And they had the master prison that's got all Christians. When the people disobey, they don't send them to um, solitary. solitary. They sent them to prayer and fasting. And they have to pray. They have prayer at night. They have a watch of people interceding so that no, because what the relatives of some of the people who weren't saved would do is they would bring chickens and bring sacrifices into those demonic of uh, uh, fill prisoners and the prisoners would sacrifice those to demons and cause demon activity in the prisons. So they cut all that out. Prayer cut, cut all that out. And so the prisoners got so uh, blessed with the word until they start getting things. I'm talking about people start bringing them food and so forth. So they started their own storehouse. So after they started their own storehouse, now they begin to give food to the poor outside the prison, which included some of their parents, some of their relatives. Say amen. Now I'm just 
they're saying, wait a minute, this is a long way from just going up there, coming back, so forth. I'm talking about making the prison a boarding house. I'm talking about the school and activity. I'm talking about prayer and fasting. They fast twice a week. I'm talking about in the prison and the prison is clean of everything. And I'm saying no more bars, no more closing the doors, locking them. The prisoners just walk around, took the bars off the doors, put curtains on the doors, so forth. I'm talking about in prison. I'm saying just like Joseph went to prison and the Bible says he changed the prison.